In this video, we're going to talk about engine starting and considerations besides turning a key. We're going to play a game called What's Wrong With This Picture? We will shout words out a tiny window, and we will try very hard not to look at the creepy man sitting inside the airplane. Walking to the airplane prior to pre-flight is a good time to take an overall assessment of the aircraft. Is there anything preventing the airplane from being started safely, such as tie-downs, chocks, or engine covers? In the intro, we said we're going to play a game called What's Wrong With This Picture? We can see the aircraft is tied down and the wheel chocks are in place and the pilot's inside ready to start the engine. And we'll say that pilot removed the tie downs and proceeded to start the airplane and is in this situation. So now I'll ask again, what's wrong with this picture? And you can clearly see there is a wheel chalk on the nose and on both mains. And this may be Microsoft Flight Simulator, but this does happen in the real world and you will see the point that I am trying to make. And how does one get in this situation? One reason is not doing a proper pre-flight inspection. This is not a good situation to be in, and you'll see why shortly. And what about this situation? Facing the fuel pump and getting ready to start. Not a good situation either. But what about here? The parking brake is set, and the aircraft is no longer tied down and all wheel chocks are removed. There's also nothing in front of the airplane or behind the airplane. Now we can start the engine. After doing a thorough and complete walk around, we're now to the before starting engine checklist. The first item on the checklist, brakes, and we can see by the handle there, they are set. When that engine starts, if we're not holding the brakes, it is possible the airplane will roll forward. Next is carburetor heat. We want this full off. If the carburetor heat were on, that would allow unfiltered air to enter the engine. Then for fuel selector, desired tank. Normally we start and take off on the fullest tank. We're going to say that's the right tank. And the last item, radios off. There's a switch behind the yoke on the right side. That switch is off. And it's not a good idea to have radios on during engine starting. It's better to have them off to prevent electrical spikes to the avionics during starting which could also cause damage to the avionics. And you also want as much power as possible going to the starter, not to the avionics. The throttle needs to go one quarter inch open for starting the engine when cold. Next, the master switch to on, then the electric fuel pump to on, and then the mixture rich. And one thing to watch for when we turn the electric fuel pump on and the mixture to rich, we want to verify that the fuel pressure increases. This airplane has an engine driven fuel pump, but obviously when the engine's off, it needs an electric fuel pump to get fuel to the engine. So we need to do two things before we turn the key. We need to look around the airplane, make sure there's nobody around it. And then we need to open the window and yell, clear prop. And when you do that, be loud and be authoritative. And then wait a few seconds before starting the airplane. If there is somebody down underneath the nose where you can't see them, give them time to move. Now that we've turned the ignition switch to the start position, once the engine fires, we can let go of it. It's spring-loaded to the both position. In the both position, that just means both magnetos are working and supplying a spark to all the spark plugs. The next thing we need to do is adjust the throttle to 800 to 1000 RPMs, and then check for oil pressure. And here we have this note from the pilot's operating handbook. If oil pressure is not indicated within 30 seconds, stop the engine and determine the trouble. That's very important. If you don't have oil pressure within 30 seconds, mixture would go to cutoff. And here is a sometimes common mistake, one that I've actually seen back when I was a flight instructor. The student will start the engine. They've got the throttle cracked too much. The RPM goes way over 1,000. They leave it there, and they don't even realize it needs to be pulled back to 1,000. They don't even realize that it's up there. And this is another good reason to set the parking brake, because if this happens, this will make the airplane roll forward. So get the throttle pulled back to the optimum range suggested by the POH and also check for oil pressure. Now let's look at a few other situations that can be encountered during engine starting. And straight out of the FAA's airplane flying handbook, although quite rare, the starter motor may remain electrically and mechanically engaged after engine start. This can be detected by a continuous and very high current draw on the ammeter. Some airplanes also have a starter engaged warning light specifically for this purpose. The engine should be shut down immediately if this occurs. And the bottom paragraph is very important also. The pilot should be attentive for sounds, vibrations, smell, or smoke that are not consistent with normal operational experience. 
Any concerns should lead to a shutdown and further investigation. So one example of this, if you have a good engine start, but after the engine start, you notice the airplane is shaking, there's a vibration, there could be something wrong with the propeller, the engine, that would be an indication to shut the airplane down and cancel the flight. Let's say we do an engine start and we do get a stuck starter. This is what it will look like. You can also see over to the right of the mixture is the ammeter and it's pegged all the way to the right. It's showing a very high load, which is telling us that the starter is engaged. There should be a checklist procedure for this. If not, the engine would need to be shut down immediately. Keep in mind when the mixture is pulled to cutoff, the electrical power is still going to the starter the starter won't be de-energized until the master switch is turned off. Here's the section out of the Airman Certification Standards on engine starting. And one thing we didn't cover a lot because I can't duplicate it in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but there are different scenarios for engine starting. There's starting engine when cold, when hot, when flooded, and there's even a procedure for starting with an external power source. And there can even be engine limitations related to starting, such as how long can the starter be engaged? How many start attempts can you make? So for example, a start limitation might be 10 seconds with the starter engaged, followed by a 20 second rest period. And you can do that three times after the third time, you may have to wait a certain period of time for the starter to cool down before more engine starts can be attempted. For risk management, we're gonna look at a case study on propeller safety. So here's the situation we saw a few minutes ago. The engine is started, but the wheel chocks are still in place. In real world flying, you would think nobody in their right mind would reach down and pull the chocks out with that propeller spinning. Would you do it? I hope not, but sadly, it does happen. It has happened. It keeps happening. There have been numerous fatal accidents from people walking into propellers. And believe it or not, here's a recent situation where it actually happened. And this is from an NTSB report. The pilot reported that he performed a pre-flight inspection at night and started the airplane, but the airplane would not move forward as he attempted to taxi from parking to the runway. The pilot looked out the left window to see if there were wheel chocks, and his passenger exited the right door and checked the right main landing gear for wheel chocks. The passenger then moved to the front of the airplane and attempted to remove the chocks from the nose wheel. The passenger's right hand was struck by the propeller, which resulted in a serious injury. So right there is an actual report where this actually happened not that long ago. And this was totally 100% preventable. So why am I bringing this up? This is why. Of the 286 people that answered this poll, 16% of you fly, 10% of you are learning to fly, 11% are planning to take lessons in the future, and another 38% want to learn to fly someday. So how could this accident have been prevented? And one way to do that is for the pilot to brief the passengers to not exit the airplane until the propeller has stopped turning. Include that on the passenger briefing before the flight. And if you see somebody exiting the airplane, pull the mixture to idle and shut the engine off immediately. And this is something that I've seen happen. I've seen people give airplane rides. They don't want to shut the engine off. They let people exit. They let another group get on and they leave the engine on the whole time. And the passengers getting on and off are just one misstep away from walking into or falling into a spinning propeller. And here's another situation where a propeller did damage. This time it was to an airplane. And if you want more information on engine starting, the FAA's Airplane Flying Handbook Section 2 has a large section on engine starting. And this is a free publication on the FAA's website. And one more fantastic publication is this, the Risk Management Handbook. This book talks all about risk management, but also has lots of case studies and lots of discussion on the events that happened. So in closing, be careful around airplane propellers. Treat it with a lot of respect, Treat it like it's always on, and be sure to brief your passengers on propeller safety.